us. I'm here with Michael Rojo with Jobs with Justice. Thank you for joining me of today. Course. Had you on before. Why did you on today specifically on a subject matter Go Local has been reporting on extensively? This pertains to the developer Brady Sullivan here in Rhode Island. Go Local's big story today was looking at new allegations facing the de developer, including the fire marshal investigating Harris Mill Wasps. Uh, we've heard from a doctor uh, about seeing patients and his call to the Department of Health to take action. You've clearly been following Brady Sullivan. Yeah. And also the need for oversight. You've got the workers' perspective, right. especially when they're there. So, what are your thoughts as to where we are with the state with mega developers who might be getting historic tax credits and what needs to be done? So, the um, I mean, Brady Sullivan's backstory really is a pretty grim story. You guys know it. You're some of the first to report on it. Um, they have a record of environmental damage and violating workplace safety. This is tough. Um, <laughs> So, honestly, the historic tax credit has a lot of use, and it's a valuable tool, but it's only good if it's actually serving the people in Rhode Island. Um, right now, developers use it as a way to get around labor law and environmental regulation. Um, so there needs to be some oversight and accountability attached to it, and possibly lockout language or something to make it be better. So, basically, a need to address the structure of historic tax credits, and specifically oversight. Right. It's almost all oversight and enforcement. So it's not linked right now. So if I find, for example, the rubber mill where they're blowing lead dust into the air openly without any shielding whatsoever, um, we could get them to shut down that aspect, but we couldn't get them to shut down the job. And there needs to be like a top down looking at what they're doing. So what do you hear from the workers? That's your perspective right. of like, folks on the job. So what are they telling you? So the conditions are unsafe. They're never given proper um, personal protection equipment or the training to use it. Uh, and always the subcontractors are always the lowest, lowest bidder, and they often change hands before people are able to actually collect their money and get paid on time. They also have a history of misclassification, of telling people they're being subcontractors when they're not really subcontractors. Well, we had some back and forth this morning after the article was published. Again, your call for more oversight for both developers and specifically as it pertains to who's getting money through the historic right. tax credit program. But I got you here at the State House because you've got some, uh, I'm sure, activity here today. What is it you've got? Well, I was visiting, honestly. <laughs> um, keeping I, you know, tabs on the power Keeping tabs. Well, no, there's a, the driver's license bill is going to be heard next Tuesday. Okay. So I was talking to some folks about that and wanted to make sure we had people who are going to come out. For so that. you're getting that set up. Do you expect a lot of folks to turn out for yes, us? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm glad you could come here and talk about Brady Sullivan. I'm sure we'll be talking about driver's I'm licenses. I'm sure you will. <laughs> Mike Rojo with Jobs with Justice. I appreciate your taking the time today. Anytime. We'll have Thank more you. for you on the new revenue estimating numbers that just came out. We just spoke with the Speaker of the House, so be sure to tune in to Go Local. But for us today, here at the State House, Mike wraps it up for Go Local Live here at the Rhode Island State House. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rhode Island State House. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for watching this Thursday afternoon. Lots going on up here. Heard from Speaker of the House, Nicholas Mattiello. The numbers just coming out from May Revenue Estimating Conference, $130 million ahead of projections. Now, he said optimistic, but provides only some relief in that there's going to still have to be hard decisions made. Broke down those numbers, including an uh, additional $10 million in caseload, so costs there as well. We had Julie Casimir, representative, talking about legislation introduced to provide fentanyl strips throughout the state. Now, this is to detect the presence of fentanyl in drugs, which she pointed out has been part of so many overdoses as part of the opioid ep epidemic and more. She talked about that piece of legislation. Mike Arojo is talking about Brady Sullivan with Jobs with Justice and Paul Roselli. A Democratic candidate for governor here today, Energy Siting Facility Act. They're looking at making some changes to that. He broke down what he sees as necessary moving forward. So I appreciate everyone who's coming on Go Local Live here. Everyone is watching. We'll have more for you tomorrow on live.
with plenty more on golocalprov.com and Facebook. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Go, go, go.